What's going on everybody? Josh Engelman for awesomemode.com and I am back with my DraftKings favorites. My top five plays at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end for this Sunday's main slate. Now be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. Definitely have one Sunday morning before all the shows start. Finally, let me know in the comments section, who are your favorite options at quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end for the slate? We're starting at tight end, and on the outside looking in, Trey Burton, Hayden Hurst, Robert Tanyan, Kyle Rudolph, and Hunter Henry. Who are my top five tight ends? It's time to find out. Coming in at number five, we have Evan Ingram, 4,900, projected for 10.5 fantasy points. A little bit of an ambiguity on who's going to be the quarterback for the Giants. I don't think it's going to matter all that much. I think this is actually a pretty good spot for Ingram. While they may be 10-point underdogs, 47-point game total. Seahawks 29th in the league in passing DVOA. That's not all that worrisome for Ingram. You would expect the Giants to have to throw. I think that's a benefit. Uh, he doesn't go for north of 30 all that frequently, but he's in the optimal lineup 6.8% of the time. Now we take quite a bit of a step up in tier number four, Dallas Goddard, 4,300, 10.7 fantasy point projection at Green Bay. This is sort of a similar setup for Evan Ingram, other than I guess the quarterback position is less in flux, maybe. Nine point underdogs at the Packers, 48 point game total, but the Packers defense is not all that good. 24th against the run, 18th against the pass. Not much that I'm worried about. 9.8% chance of being in the optimal lineup. That's quite a bit ahead of Evan Ingram. We, we clearly took a step up at tight end. Taking another slight step forward, we're going to number three, Jordan Aikens, 2,900, nine-point fantasy projection. But what we're looking at really is that $2,900 salary. Monster game total, 51 total points for this spot, Houston and Indy. It's a tough matchup from a defensive standpoint. Indy top 10 against the run, against the pass, specifically sixth against the pass. That benefits or, I guess, takes away from Aikens much more. We're not expecting a monster day here from Aikens, but if he gets in the end zone, you're going to be very happy. 2,900 is simply too cheap for the type of performance you could expect from Aikens. That's enough to put him in the optimal 10.4% of the time. That's good for third. Stop me if you've heard this before, but we've got another tight end with some potential quarterback issues that's still ranking pretty high. Number two, Mike Gesicki, 4,200, projected for 10.9 fantasy points. Dolphins, monster favorites. I don't think that'll matter all that much, whether it's Tua or Ryan Fitzpatrick. Cincy, not very good. 21st against the run, 26th against the pass. Shows up in the optimal 11.7% of the time. I love Gasicki in this spot. There's only one tight end I like more, and I'm tired of getting burned by him. And that guy is Darren Waller, 6,100, projected for 14.5 fantasy points. I just don't know how he's not the top projected tight end. Shows up in the optimal 15% of the time. Has a 4% chance of going for north of 30 fantasy points. This spot is as good as it gets. 9.5 point game favorites, a 47 point game total, against the New York Jets, the worst pass defense in the league. I'm tired of going to Waller because I feel like I can't get him right, but there's no way to avoid him this week. He is the clear-cut top tight end option on the main slate. Now, as we transition to the wide receivers, I'm going to be honest, from 10 to 2, they're all pretty bunched together, but there's a very clear-cut number one that we're going to get to. Rounding out the top 10, however, DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Parker, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, and Michael Thomas in the sixth spot. That was a tough thing to say. We're moving on to number five. Now coming in, number five, Allen Robinson, 6,700, projected for 17.4 fantasy points. At home, against the Lions, slight favorites, solid game total. Poor defense, 23rd against the run, 28th against the pass. Goes for north of 30, almost 13% of the time. Shows up in the optimal lineup about 13% of the time. I think it's a benefit that Trubisky is under center. I want to get myself some Allen Robinson. That's why he shows up in my top five. Now at number four, showing up in 14% of the optimals, we've got Cooper Cup, 6,100, projected for 16.1 fantasy points. Rams at Arizona. Slight favorites as well, 48-point game total. We know we're going to get a, a pretty quick pace coming from the Cardinals. 14th against the run, 12th against the pass. 
it's just sort of a normal everyday game but i think cooper cup is just a couple hundred dollars too cheap 6100 is a really easy price tag to get to specifically for someone that can go for north of 30 fantasy points 10 percent of the time i think cooper cup is well worth the shot at the upside and i think facing the cardinals might raise his floor a little bit just because of the additional plays Assuming he is back and better than ever, number three, Adam Thielen, 7,300, 17.5 fantasy point projection, and uh, basically the second best matchup on the slate. 10.5 point favorites at home with a 51.5 point game total. All of that is obviously fantastic. Jacksonville stinks. 26th against the run, 31st against the pass. Thielen goes for north of 30 fantasy points 16% of the time, shows up in the optimal 15% of the time. I hope he's back on the field because this spot does not get better. Unless you want to take the guy that lines up on the opposite side of him, number two, Justin Jefferson, 6,900, 17.9 fantasy point projection, and all of the same matchup benefits that Adam Thielen gets. Uh, 26 against the run and 31st against the pass. That is how bad the Jaguars are. Jefferson goes for north of 30 fantasy points 17% of the time. He's in the optimal north of 15% of the time, a hair north of Adam Thielen. Either way, whether you want to go to just one of these guys, the double stack, we'll have to talk about Dalvin Cook in a bit. I don't know how you can avoid that three-headed monster, in particular Justin Jefferson at wide receiver, my number two. But the no doubt about it, number one option, that has to be Brandon Cooks. 5,600 projected for 17.2 fantasy points. Taking on Indy, slight underdog, so I like the game script. 51 game total is over 50, so I'm immediately checking that one off as another positive. Slightly difficult matchup, and he's going to get a little bit of extra attention now that Will Fuller is suspended for being on the gas. 16% chance for Cooks to go north of 30, and... As you can see on the screen, a 21% chance of being in the optimal, significantly higher than Justin Jefferson in the two spot. It's Cooks and then everybody else below him. He's quite clearly the best option. He is essentially a cash game lock on DraftKings. Don't overthink it. Get yourself some Brandon Cooks. We move on to the running backs now, rounding out the top 10, Kareem Hunt, Miles Sanders, Gio Bernard, Chris Carson, and just outside of my top five, Austin Eckler at number six, which leads us to number five, 9,200 this week, Derrick Henry, bell of the ball last week, or at least one of the bells of the ball, considering Tyreek took a little bit of a step forward after his game. 21 fantasy point projection taken on Cleveland. Five and a half point favorites and a 54 point total. I think both of those things point to a really solid outlook for Henry. Brown's 20th ranked defense, 23rd against the pass. And Henry goes for north of 30 fantasy points almost 20% of the time. He's in the optimal about 14% of the time. I just want to be here. The the number 20 ranked defense against the run against Derrick Henry. Oh, the spot looks fantastic. He only picks up more steam as the season moves on. This is a spot where I want to get Derrick Henry. Or you can save a little bit of money. Go to my number four guy, Aaron Jones, 7,200 projected for 17.9 fantasy points. Taking on a Philly team that's not very good. 11th against the run, 20th against the pass. Packers, big favorites. Nine point line, 48 point game total. I don't think you get the monster, monster game out of Aaron Jones like you do for Derrick Henry. He still goes for north of 30, 10% of the time, shows up in the optimal 14% of the time. The salary is just a lot easier to work with. If you go, let's just say you go to Henry at 9K, you have to pair that with a 5K wide receiver. If you go with Aaron Jones at 72, you're getting a 7K wide receiver as well. You could be a little bit more balanced. I like that sort of idea here. And Aaron Jones is just in a really good spot because Philly is uh, not very good. But then again, neither is the rest of the NFC East. I don't want to single them out. Wouldn't be a slate if I didn't recommend my number three guy, James Robinson, 7,300, projected for 18.2 fantasy points. Jacksonville, tough spot against Minnesota, but big underdogs, 51 and a half point game total, a middle of the pack defense. Again, we're not expecting the monster, monster 30 plus point game, but it happens 11% of the time. I do think he's just ultra efficient with an incredibly high floor. Shows up in the optimal 16% of the time. He's going to be involved in the rush game until this game is out of reach, at which point he will be involved in the passing game. I roster this guy every week. I don't expect this week to stop me. Um, It's going to happen again. Get yourself James Robinson. He's my number three. 
At number two, we've got last week's bust, 9,500 Dalvin Cook, projected for 22.6 fantasy points. Minnesota taking on Jacksonville, and every part of this game looks great. Defense is terrible, 26th against the run. If you want to catch the passes out of the backfield, fantastic, 31st against the pass. Monster total, huge favorites. Game script couldn't be better. He goes for north of 30 fantasy points, 27% of the time. That's a monstrous number. You can see that's a huge jump over James Robinson. He's in the optimal 20.5% of the time. I love getting to Dalvin Cook. I think he's a perfect option to spend a ton of money on. Obviously, it's going to be difficult to, like, say, pair him with Derrick Henry. But paying close attention to the ownership on Cook and Henry it will be very important. You'll probably want to go the opposite directions on each guy in a GPP format. But right now, Cook quite a bit ahead of Derrick Henry. And finally, coming in at number one, 5,500, it's David Montgomery, projected for 16.7 fantasy points. His price is just simply too cheap for the rest of the running backs right now. He's really easy to fit in. Lions defense, not very good. 23rd against the run. Game script fits him pretty well. Bears slight favorites. Again, we're not expecting this monster game. 9% chance of going for north of 30, but a 21% chance of being in the optimal. That's what happens when you're 5,500. He's a perfect pairing with Dalvin Cook. He's a perfect pairing with Derrick Henry. The salary savings you get here, it's hard to ignore. I think he's the best option in this range. That's enough to put David Montgomery number one. Before we get to the quarterbacks, one last reminder, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when it goes live, and follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman, because you don't want to miss my sim updates on Sunday. When we get more news, as things change, when guys get ruled out, I will have the updates for you. Don't miss it, at Josh Engelman. Now, on to the quarterbacks. Rounding out the bottom of the top 10, we've got Russell Wilson, Jared Goff, Tua, if he plays, Phillip Rivers, and Kirk Cousins. Obviously, you guys know I'm a fan of the wide receivers for the Vikings this week. Cousins on the outside looking in, though, of my top five. So now we move on to the number five spot. At number five, 6,300. I'd like some Taysom Hill. 20.9 fantasy point projection. It's at Atlanta. Game script should be mildly favorable. They're slight favorites, 45 and a half point game total. Falcons run defense is good, but I think it kind of transcends Taysom Hill a bit. I think you can go for north of 30, like 16% of the time. I'm a fan of Taysom Hill as a fantasy option, particularly at a $6,300 price tag. He's going to look for himself. Any red zone opportunities are going to be massive. And ultimately, I'm not all that worried about who I have at quarterback. As you can see, the difference between Taysom Hill at 5, 6.3% of the time, and Russell Wilson at 10, 5.6% of the time, it's marginal. I don't get too bogged up on it. You're certainly not really looking to stack Taysom Hill. It's not a necessity. So if you need a naked quarterback that's relatively cheap, Taysom Hill is your best option. Unless you want my number four guy, Cam Newton, 5,800, 20.7 fantasy point projection. Uh, one point favorites, 47 point game total. 31st against the run, which should help. 17th against the pass. I know Newton has not looked like himself as of late, hoping that he can slowly start to right the ship. 13% chance, well, almost 14% chance of going for north of 30 fantasy points. And again, a 6.4% chance of being in the optimal. These guys are all bunched together. It's not all that important who you get. You can run Cam out there uh, as a solo. You don't need him. You, he can be naked. You can run him out there with Jacoby Myers if you'd like. These are just some of your options if you want to play a fully naked lineup. One guy you probably don't need to play naked. What up, Devontae Adams? Number three, Aaron Rodgers, 6,800, a 21 and a half, 21.1 fantasy point projection. Excuse me. Nine point favorites and a 48 point game total. If these first couple touchdowns are passing touchdowns, Rodgers could be in for a big day. Eagles are 20th against the pass, and Aaron Rodgers should have no problem carving them up. Goes for north of 30, 19% of the time. Shows up in the optimal about 7% of the time. So we're slowly working our way up here, but obviously the Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams stack combo is fantastic. Taking another solid step forward, number two at 7,500, Deshaun Watson, 23.2 fantasy point projection. It's the big total that helps here. Slight underdogs and a 50 point game total. Both of those things lead me to believe that Watson's going to be throwing the ball a lot. Now he is going to be without Will Fuller. That's not a real big help for him. Obviously Fuller, the number one wide out on the team. It's going to have to do it a little bit differently, but I expect him to have to throw the ball a lot. 
He goes for north of 30, 25% of the time. If you can get a Deshaun Watson rushing touchdown, even better. Shows up in the optimal 8.3% of the time. That's good. That's good. But it's not number one. By one-tenth of a percent, as if there was any doubt, number one, Mitch Trubisky, 5,400, 19.7 fantasy point projection. Uh, Bears taking on the Lions, three-point favorites and a 45-point game total against the team that ranks 23rd against the run and 28th against the pass. That all points me to believe that Mitch Trubisky's in a good spot. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points, 14.4% of the time. But because of his salary, 5,400, he is the most optimal quarterback on the slate. Allen Robinson showed up in my top 10 wide receivers. I would happily pair the two guys together. This spot is the spot that you want Trubisky, my number one quarterback for this week. Alrighty, guys, those are my favorites. My top five plays at quarterback, running back, wide out, and tight end. You guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, notification bell, all that jazz. There's a FanDuel version of this video leaking around here somewhere. Find the link. Click it. Go watch that if you're playing on both sites. Good luck this Sunday. I'll be on our strategy show Sunday morning. I'll be on live before lock at noon with Chris Spaggs and Greg Ehrenberg. It's going to be a fun weekend. Best of luck. And we'll talk to you again for top fives next Friday.